<laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. What's going on ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? You know why you clicked on this video. You know why you're here. So I'm going to make this short and sweet. Getting right into it. I started out just making a simple game project using the third person example map. Although this will also work in other applicable modes such as a first person game. I leave all these settings as their defaults as they will be for most projects and then load up the project. To start. We just want to right click, click blueprint class, and hit actor. Go ahead and name it whatever you want. I'll just name mine disappearing platform, and then open it up in editor. Here you'll only need two key components to actually create the disappearing platform. First start off with a static mesh, which I just will name floor, and then I'll use the example floor mesh that they give you within the starter content pack. Next up you will need a box collision. You could use a static mesh hit to trigger the code as well, but I have found a box collision works a lot smoother. Here I'm just going to resize the box collision so it's the about the same size and width as the platform. Doesn't need to be exact, but just try to get it as close as you can. With the box collision in place, now it's time to give our actor some code so it'll actually disappear. To start, click on the box collision in the components tab on the left then click the plus sign next to the on component begin overlap. From here, you'll want to drag off the top pin and type cast to third person character. Once you've got that, drag off the execute pin once again and type set material floor. Be sure it corresponds to whatever you named your static mesh component, in my case where I named it floor. This is where you'll select a material to act as an indicator that the collision has been triggered and that the platform is about to disappear. Usually a white material works best here, but I just used the nice grass material I had and that works for now. Next we're going to get a delay so the floor doesn't instantly disappear, unless that's what you're going for, I don't judge. After that, drag off the execute pin again and type set visibility. This will just make the static mesh invisible after the box collision has been triggered. And finally, we'll drag off the execute pin one last time and type in set collision. Once again, make sure this part is also for the static mesh component, in which mine is once again named floor, and then make sure it is set to no collision. Now, go ahead and click compile, and you'll find out that I lied to you, and I forgot to connect the other actor pin to the cast third person character node to tell the collision what to look for. After that though, you should be good to go and have a disappearing platform. Let's test it out. Looking pretty good. If you want to be able to use the platform more than just once, or have it reappear at all, I'll show you how to do that now. The code is going to be basically the same but in reverse. Once again hit the box collision and hit the plus sign on component end overlap this time. This time we don't need to cast it to the third person character as he won't be triggering the collision. So go ahead and just set material right off the bat. Here you're going to reselect the material that the static mesh had to begin with. Which in my case was this cube material. Then we're going to drag off set material and type in set visibility again. This time we won't need a delay. Once you have your set visibility for the static mesh, go ahead and drag off the execute pin and once again type in set collision. Again for all these parts make sure you are getting the static mesh component of the floor set the collision to the default collision once again and then make sure the new visibility is checked finally I add a delay just so the platform does not reappear instantly now we should be able to save and recompile that and our platform should now disappear and reappear
Poetry in motion, baby.